Welcome to another episode of 7 Minutes Medicine. Today we're going to talk about a very common clinical encounter, the diagnosis of acute liver failure. So first, to diagnose liver failure, we need first evidence of liver injury by the elevated liver enzymes and evidence of the decreased function of the liver. Coagulopathy is one indicator, and encephalopathy is the other indicator. So the INR should be more than 1.5, and the clinical exam should reveal encephalopathy. There should be no previous cirrhosis, and the insult should happen within the last 26 weeks. The timeline from the liver disease into the symptoms less than 26 weeks. So the history taking... Uh, we have to ask about the timeline of the symptoms as we said earlier. We have to ask the medication history to see if there's any medication is contributing to the liver disease. We should ask about the alcohol use and to quantify it as much as we can. And we have to ask about any previous episodes of jaundice and if there's any toxin exposure and if there is any risk factors for viral hepatitis. We also have to ask about the OCP use, any hypercoagulable status, and if there is any history of active cancer. Also, we have to ask about hypotension, especially if the patient was on uh, in the hospital before. And we have to ask about heart failure and family history of Wilson disease. For the symptoms. They may come with fatigue, nausea, anorexia, vomiting, right upper quadrant pain, and abdominal distension with ascites. And there are very many specific symptoms, so we have to keep a high index of suspicion. For the signs, uh, we can see jaundice, and we can see hepatic encephalopathy. And please check our lecture about hepatic encephalopathy for more details. And you have to, to examine the skin to see if there is any signs of viral illness, like herpes, ascites, right upper quadrant tenderness. For the lab work, as we said earlier, INR elevated more than 1.5, elevated liver enzymes, elevated bilirubin, and low platelets. And if the liver enzyme is started to go down, this may indicate either recovery, or worsening of the liver function. So you have to examine the patient clinically to decide. Another important findings on the blood work, it might be hemolytic anemia, elevated creatinine, which is a very important finding, and you have to keep a close eye on the creatinine because it is one of the indicators of poor prognosis. Uh, elevated amylase and lipase, they are very specific, but they can you can find them on the blood work. Low glucose and low phosphorus, low magnesium, low potassium, elevated ammonia, and elevated lactate. Labs that can help differentiate the etiology of the acute liver failure. First, if you suspect uh, hepatitis, then you have to do the blood work for the viral hepatitis. Uh, if you suspect hepatitis A, you do IgM. And if you suspect hepatitis B, you do anti-HEP B, service antigen, anti-core IgM, hepatitis D, anti-HEP D, and hepatitis E, IgM, if you think about hepatitis E, especially in pregnant uh, patients. And uh, if you suspect herpes and varicella zoster, you order DNA. And there is some actually uh, order panel in some hospitals that can give you all of the hepatitis, the common hepatitis in the area in one uh, panel. Some other uh, conditions, if you see elevated bilirubin, but low alkphos, you may think about Wilson disease, so you have to order seroplasmin. If you see elevated ALTST, but the bilirubin is not very high and the INR is very high, you have to think about acetaminophen. If you see very elevated Liver enzymes with elevated LDH, you have to think about hypoperfusion as the cause. And if there is a suspect of the autoimmune hepatitis, you order the 
autoimmune panel, anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-smooth muscle. And if you suspect, if there's a pregnancy, then you have to suspect acute fatty liver uh, failure of pregnancy or HELP syndrome. So for the imaging, uh, ultrasound, uh, probably the best imaging technique and acute liver failure because it provides you with two answers. First, if you do it with Doppler, it can tell you if there is any clot and it can also give you an idea about the parenchyma of the liver. CT angio might be better for mass in the liver, but you try to avoid it as much as you can because it's going to mess with the kidneys. And the echocardiogram, you do it to rule out a cardiac function as the cause of the acute liver injury. Liver biopsy, and if we're going to do liver biopsy, we do it because we don't know the answer. And ideally, we would like to do a transjugonal approach because this will result in less bleeding, which is an important thing in the acute liver failure. Biopsy can help diagnose malignancy, autoimmune hepatitis, Wilson disease, herpes simplex viral hepatitis, and acute fatty liver disease. Thank you for listening, and please, if you like our content, subscribe to our channel to support us. Thank you.